Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with a video looking at Red Dead Redemption 2 online. If you enjoy this content, please paint the Modest Pelican logo on a brick and throw it through your neighbor's window, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So the first thing I have to do is create my online character. I wanted my character to have both charm and audacity. I also wanted him to have a rich backstory and a face that would appeal to the ladies, but also strike fear into the hearts of my enemies. After much tweaking, and customizing, I came up with the perfect look. A recovering meth addict who used to be an up and coming male porn star but had to stop due to excessive meth intake, which subsequently gave him erectile dysfunction. I also added a scar across his face that people will probably assume is from a badass knife fight or something, but is actually from a failed attempt at trying to do a triple tail whip on a Razor scooter when he was 12 years old. Lads and lasses, I give you Papa Pelican. So here I am in prison when some law enforcement officers rock up and say, Hey, you there, we're taking you away to be executed. I'm like, no worries, constable, let's get out of here. I am loaded into a wagon which gives me a brief moment to reflect on my life before I get hung. Fortunately, on the journey, old mate rocks up and frees me from the cage. He says, hey there, you dodgy junkie, I saved your life and in return, I need your help. He takes me back to camp where I am prompted to choose some fresh new clothes. Unfortunately, I don't see any options for bum bags, Nike TNs, or gold chains, and the realization that my Eshe lad chav meth smoking days are probably behind me slowly sinks in. I settle for a more traditional cowboy outfit and hit the road. I am told the local post office clerk might have a mission for me. I arrive at my destination and ask Mutton Chops McGee how I can help. He tells me about a bunch of bandits who have a treasure map that I should go and steal. I thank him for the information and also thank God that I didn't have to share a jail cell with this freak. He looks like the kind of guy who would stand two inches from your face watching you sleep as he fondles himself and quite frankly, that's just not my idea of a good night's rest. I set off on my horse to find the bandits. I arrive at my destination and rather than asking questions, I simply shoot the place up and eventually out pops a cheeky scallywag who was hiding in one of the tents. He offers me the map and begs me not to kill him. So there I am looking at this helpless fella in his black bowling hat and crimson button up shirt. I realize that he and I are the same, but also different in our own ways. We are the same because we are all brothers under the same sun, but we are different because he has a bullet in his head. I follow the map and manage to locate the treasure and some of the loot is called gold nuggets. 100 gold nuggets equals one gold bar. I'm pretty sure gold bars can be used to buy weapon and ability upgrades. You can also apparently buy gold bars with real world money. How Rockstar balances this pay to win scenario will determine if Red Dead Redemption 2 online will be any good. If for example, I keep getting killed by 10 year olds who have laser beams attached to their horses because their mum CBF'd parenting and gives them unlimited use of her credit card instead, then I'm throwing out an early yikes. I guess time will tell because we are only still in the beta. Anyway, I did a few more missions and finally got access to the big wild, wild west. I met up with my mate Jezo and we proceeded to wave at each other for a while. There was no point to this as we were on voice chat together, but we just found it funny. But hey, at least there's not dabbing, flossing, and throwing boogie bombs at each other. Being an online open world cowboy game, we knew exactly what we had to do next. We had to find and hogtie another player. We cruised down to the sleepy town of Strawberry and located our target. Jezo went around to the front of the town to cause a distraction whilst I snuck through the hills. The plan was going perfectly, so I equipped my lasso and lassoed the unsuspecting wannabe cowboy. I was laughing so hard at this point as I did not realize he could break free from the ropes and as I tried to load him onto my horse, he escaped, which surprised both Jezo and myself. He proceeded to push me to the ground and pulled a revolver out on Jezo, gunning him down in cold blood. I could not believe what I had just witnessed. I mean, I know I have killed a lot of NPCs while playing Red Dead 2, but never another real player. With no other options, I myself pull out a revolver and put the sick, twisted soul down to rest. 
and I have to say, it felt good. I also learned a valuable lesson, trust no one. I mean, we did hogtie him, which wasn't a friendly first impression, but come on, we are hardly the bad guys here. Anyway, it actually felt so good killing him that I waited for him to come back and get his revenge, and then I killed him again. I could get used to this. We came across another fool who actually tried to take a few long shots at us, but Jezo was able to take him down. Seriously, are these aspiring outlaws not getting the message? These are our lands now. People who go around killing other players in online games for no reason are known as griefers. Since my character doesn't smoke meth anymore and therefore has a lot of time on his hands, I decided I would become a full-time griefer. I see this as simply being risk averse. If we shoot everyone first, then no one will have a chance to shoot us. Moments later, I find someone standing still, which either means they are in the menus or AFK. I decide not to overthink it and shoot the poor sod in the head. Not only that, but I also take his hat. I don't know why, but it just feels wrong taking another man's hat. But like, it looks good, so I keep it. Not surprisingly at all, he comes back for round two, but unfortunately for him, he doesn't see Jezo riding up on him, and is lassoed and dragged by horseback right in front of me. Before he can find his footing, I unleash a volley of bullets into his vital organs. This guy stood literally no chance. We could not have planned a better murder. That being said, this griefing business is starting to take a toll on my conscience. Another player runs up on us, but before I have even registered what's going on, I have put two bullets into their chest. It turns out this is actually my friend, No Remorse, coming to join our posse. I apologize for shooting him and we have this nice moment where we are all united. But then the guy whose hat I stole earlier kills No Remorse right in front of me. It's my fault too because I was the reason he was on low health. I then kill Mr. No Hat for the third time to extract revenge for my mate. I kid you not, he comes at us again and so we kill him a fourth time. You have to admire his persistence, but honestly, I think I have to stop griefing as it is turning into an unhealthy addiction. But that is so much easier said than done. I can't describe to you how funny it is hog tying people up and leaving them in the mud. On top of this, every time you don't shoot someone first, they just shoot you, so you may as well shoot them first. As we laugh at this poor guy hog tied in the mud, I wonder I wonder if our three-man gang can be the difference. Can we change this online world? Can we bring peace to the Middle East? Or the Wild West, whatever. We decide to move across the country to a new town and I notice that we are riding up on a fellow player. Jezo and No Remorse were actually peaceful most of the time. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I instigated most of the griefing. As we got closer to the fellow cowboy, I summoned all of my willpower and forced myself not to shoot him. He rode his way, we rode our way, and I had this moment of reflection. Maybe I'm the problem. I was the one who hogtied that guy back in Strawberry. I was the one who shot that player while he wasn't even watching and stole his hat. Could Papa Pelican be the toxic player that people complain about in online forums? Maybe this is a new leaf for me where I stop griefing and become a friendly online gamer. Nat. Anyway, we arrive at the town and I go and get a cup of tea in real life. Whilst I am AFK, Jezo hog ties me, puts me on his horse and heads towards the railway lines in the hope that he can get me crushed by a train. Luckily I come back before this happens, but I do want some revenge. We agree that a fist fight to the death is the manliest way to settle the disagreement. The fight rages on for a surprisingly long time. We are both on like 1 HP and somehow I manage to land the final blow. We make a truce and night begins to sweep over. No remorse tells us that he is starting a mass brawl over in the town and so we run over to join the fun. Nothing solidifies a friendship like massacring the entire population of a town together. While that carnage plays out, I'll talk about my first impressions of Red Dead Redemption 2 online. I mean, I was a huge fan of the single player and it obviously shares the same controls, shooting mechanics, movement and horse riding, so there's no surprises there. Just messing around with my mates was damn good fun and there is a decent amount of mission 
missions to complete and activities to do. I mostly showed us just killing other players in this video, but I assure you there is loads of more constructive ways to spend your time. The biggest issue I see the game having is microtransaction pay to win problems. They are walking a dangerous line with their economy right now. In the beta, it seems like it will take a ridiculous amount of time to save for upgrades, new guns, camp improvements, the ability to create permanent posses, clothing, fast travel, new horses, and just basically everything. I don't mind grinding and saving to an extent, but if it isn't fun and rewarding to play without spending real world dollars, then the online mode really isn't for me. Anyway, that's it from me, you legends. Thanks for watching, and thanks to my long-term patrons and all my new patrons. The support is humbling and unbelievable. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.